All right, let's do some single slit diffraction. I love this picture about biology to a physics student, just like bird, 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 bird. Because <laughs> we don't really know anything about birds. Uh, yeah, let's talk about single slits. So here's what happens. When you have light and it passes through one little hole, one opening, which we call a slit, uh, we're going to define that hole or the opening as B. Okay, can you see that on the drawing right there? So I've got my slit with a little opening B. What happens is this, the light that comes in, it could diffract. Remember we learned that in another topic that um, diffraction is the spreading of waves. So waves, uh, so light behaves as a wave in this case, because if it was just a particle, you would just see, look at this, see we have a slit here. Here we have a screen and it's a certain distance away here. In this case right here, let's put it, um, I can define it however I want here. In this case right here, I could define it as um, a distance r. I can define it as whatever distance I want here. But basically, this is, I've got a screen here that I'm going to project the light onto. And if light was just a particle, then you know, you'd expect to see a whole bunch of light right here in the middle, like right where, if you imagine, then it's like I pass light through a little opening. Of course, you'd expect to see lots of light right there where the opening was. But in certain conditions, if the slit opening is somewhere comparable to the size of the wavelength of the light, uh, then diffraction happens, and it, that means that, that that wave can spread. So in this case, so here, this diffraction, it's going to end up making these weird little peaks here. So what will happen is this. We could define them as, um, how about drawing them in red, maybe. So we'll see, like, a central maximum. That's true. But then we'll actually see these little other maximums here like this. This is the diffraction pattern for light. And we could actually also talk about this. Look, we can have, um, if we define some central place right here this would be the central peak here uh, then we could define you know angles we could define angles anywhere we like right we can put our angle wherever we want so we can basically be looking at you know what's that angle as we go along here now the reason why we can do this is because can you imagine now um imagine this piece right here where i've got all these all the light right here so you see like where all the lights being projected here that's right here imagine that thing then look watch me Imagine that thing is actually turned to its side, and then we were to plot the intensity. Can you see this right here? Then this would give me this. Keep in mind, my angle is not going to be in degrees. It's in radians. That's really important. And then we can draw what's called the diffraction pattern for this. So I'll draw it uh, maybe in light blue right here. It should go something like, like that, and then I'll go back up again. This is at least the first maximum i guess i'm just trying to draw it nicely here of course this would be the to see this is the peak plus the darkest pl spot plus the next peak can you see that i've got basically what i've just drawn is essentially i've drawn this that's become over there can you see that that's sort of what i've tried to draw here so this right here is what i've just drawn uh let's see if this actually makes any sense to you so the important thing is that I've taken this right here then and I've sort of projected it like this here. So now on the x-axis is radians and this is the brightness of the light, the intensity of the light. This is the diffraction pattern for single slit. This is what it looks like. So we have an equation that you're given. So the good news is we can quantify this. <clears throat> we say that theta is equal to lambda over b. This will tell you at what angle do you get the first minimum. In other words, that value of theta that we just found, that tells you this one right, that's this right here. This right here, theta right here, this, this sort of along the x-axis here, this is theta in radians. It tells you where you find the first minimum. It's right here. So maybe we're asked for like, what's the width of the central maximum? Then it'll be twice that, if that makes any sense. But now here's the problem. This is an angle. And on IB questions, you're almost always asked not just for the angle, but to actually give a real distance. If you imagine this, look, you have an angle that goes out like this. Can, does it make sense to you that if you have a small angle, or it, well, no matter what the angle, if you don't go very far out, you have a small distance. But if you go really far out, let's say like a kilometer out, maybe you go like a kilometer up or something. So see that actual distance uh, projects because of the angle. And you might think, oh, do I have to use so, uh, cosine or sine or tangent? You don't, because these angles are pretty small. Um, actually, no, even some of them are pretty big. It doesn't really matter. But we can use this thing, and because the angle is in radians, this is a really nice trick to remember. Um, if you're taking mathematics, this is the arc sine. Uh, well, this is the length, sorry, not arc sine. This is the length of an arc. 
So this right here, if the angle is in radians, only if the angle is in radians, this is the radius here of a circle, then this length right here, that will be the arc length. In this case here, we can say that, you know, if it's a small angle, arc length is pretty much straight. You know, this L is pretty much straight. So then we can get the real distance. It goes L equals R theta. That's how we can project this to a real distance. So let's do a real example just to make sure it makes more sense to you. So here we go. We have light and it passes through a single slit. It's projected onto a screen that is 3.5 meters away. So again, that means we have this sort of thing right here like this. And we have this distance right here is 3.5 meters. Now the wavelength of light used is 633 nanometers. So I hope you're okay with that. That's lambda. 633 and nanometers means 10 to the minus 9 meters. If you don't remember that, you can always look it up. The very first couple of pages on your data booklet tells you these conversions. Now the slit is 0.59 centimeters wide. What does that mean? Look over here. That's B. B is the slit width. Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you, uh, this right here, the angle is in radians. I forgot to define these here. Wavelength is the lambda, that's in meters, and the slit width is also in meters. So notice we have an angle which is in radians has meters over meters, so that's where the units cancel out. That's good. So here I am. I've got this value right here of B, which I know. I know that B is 0 0.59 centimeters. Now let's be very careful with this. Ha ha, B. Careful. Let's write B is 0 0.59, but a centimeter is times 10 to the minus 2 meters, isn't it? So just so you know, it's really important that you put in the proper units for this. So now we got everything in meters and meters. So now we're ready for it. So we want the width of the central maximum. Well, do you remember that if we do this whole thing right here, you know, this is the intensity graph. The central maximum that we're looking for is actually this right here. We want this whole thing right here. But we know that equation right here, this theta equals lambda over b, that's for the first minimum. That's the angle to get to the first minimum. So that's going to be helpful. So let's try to find actually that angle. We'll see if we can find just this little angle right here. We can find that angle theta, because theta is lambda over b, which is 633 times 10 to the minus 9 meters over b, which is 0 0.59 times 10 to the minus 2 meters. I use my trusted calculator. Whoa, excuse me. Um, I do 633 times 10 to the minus 9, divide that by 0 0.59 times 10 to the minus 2. I am left with an answer of theta equals 1.07 times 10 to the minus 4 meters. Now, we have to be very, very careful. This right here is this angle right here. Of course, then what I could do is I could find that length then if I want to project that. Remember, I can use this arc length formula. I'm going to show it to you here. This one right here, we have L equals R theta if it goes like this. So let's draw it like that. So we'll have this right here. This is R. And we'll say R equals 3.5 meters. I want this L value, which I don't know. And this right here is the angle theta. So now that L equals R theta, which is going to be equal to 3.5 meters times this angle right here. Oh, wait, watch out. This angle is not in meters. I hope you were screaming at me for that one. The angle's not in meters, it's in radians. Silly me. So I'll put it down. There we go. So we have 3.5 meters times uh, some radians. Whoops. There we go. So times this number here, 1.07 times 10 to the minus 4. Let's see what we get here. This is the length here, so I'm going to just take my answer from my calculator without rounding and keep the extra thing. So I get 3.7 five, let's say, uh, times 10 to the minus four meters. Now here's the thing. This distance right here that I found, that's only the distance right here. I've just found this. If I want the width of the central maximum, okay, I have to double that. I don't know if that makes any sense to you. So the width of the central maximum, this is really important. Okay, it'll just be equal to two times this 3.75 times 10 to the minus four meters. So I'll just do that times two on my calculator and I end up with an answer of seven. Now let's see how many decimals I can use. I can only use two significant figures, so I'll say 7.5 times 10 to the minus four meters, which is very small. 
Well, oh, that's okay. It should make sense, right? This is a very, very small thing here. This is 7.5 times 10 to the minus 4 meters. Or you could say it's uh, 0.7 millimeters, you could say, right? I mean, there's a lot of ways of determining it, but there you go. This is how you can use this single slit diffraction equation here to solve a real life question.